In today's video, let's take a look at a few weird things that can only be found in the land of the rising sun, amongst a mountain of other weird things. Kinda like this square, ultra expensive watermelon, and these toilets of the future, possibly maybe sorta. But first, let's confuse people with these houses with names on them. Houses with nameplates. To us filthy westerners, Japanese addresses are confusing, that's if we can already read Japanese. Maze-like ancient roads rendered many of Japan's street systems messy and bewildering, making individual street names almost totally redundant. Instead, neighborhoods are split up into individual blocks known as Chom, or Chomi, maybe. This forces houses on different streets to share an almost identical address. So, how do mailmen and delivery guys find the exact house they're looking for? Simple, the same way some kindergarten teachers learn the names of their students, by using nameplates. These personalized Hayasatsu nameplates have become the norm. Often affixed near a letterbox or doorway, Hayasatsu display the homeowner's surname either in Japanese characters or the English alphabet. While most are simple and cheap, others are expensive and extravagant, serving as a kind of status symbol. Food you didn't order. Getting served the wrong food at a restaurant is pretty dang frustrating. Getting food you didn't order is even more so. But when dining in Japan, food you didn't order is basically the first thing that you're gonna get, and you don't have a friggin' choice. Premium otoshi dishes are essentially compulsory appetizers, acting as a sort of cover charge along with a supplement to whet appetites and bridge the gap between the main meal. As they're often pre-prepared and ready to go, you can expect the waiter to whip these bad boys out almost immediately, sometimes even before you've ordered. Popular otoshi includes spicy octopus, offal stew, edamame beans, potato salad, and more. Thing is though, if you're new to a restaurant, you never know what you're gonna get. Energy Drink Topia Energy drinks are big pretty much anywhere in the world that they're sold. But in Japan, a country that runs on overtime, dependency on energy drinks is on a whole different level. Japanese supermarkets and convenience stores are packed with tantalizing energy drinks, often taking the shape of small, medicine-like tonics brimming with vitamins and nutrients. One of the more popular ones is Lipovatin D by Taisho Pharmaceuticals, which is loaded with taurine, vitamin B, caffeine, and inositol, giving drowsy workers or sleepless partiers a powerful kick of life. There's also lemon and orange-flavored vitamin C supplements, jelly-sipping packs with vitamins and minerals, and turmeric tonics to prevent hangovers. Something that would definitely come in handy if you somehow venture into... All-you-can-drink alcohol bars. I can just imagine that all the alcoholics out there's breaths just quickened. Japan's omnipresent all-you-can-drink alcohol, or Nomi Hadai courses, are designed for friends and co-workers to have a good time without fear of spending too much. Some of this stuff is as cheap as 3,000 yen, which translates roughly to about 25 US. This is for two plus hours of free-flowing beer, wine, cocktails, sours, and more. Food also inclusive. It's kind of a hard bargain to pass by, actually. Now, all-you-can-drink courses are generally not for people dining alone, so you're gonna need to get a group together before giving it a try. I mean, unless you're a raging alcoholic with no control, then please, by all means. Public intoxication. Hey, this goes well with the other entry. Okay, granted, not exactly public intoxication. If you go around drunk in Japan annoying people, you're probably still gonna get arrested. But drinking in public is actually perfectly fine. While stringent open container and public intoxication laws have all but banned public drinking in many countries, Japan is quite the opposite. You'll see travelers purchasing beer for the train, college students gathering for drinks in parks, and even impromptu street parties in nightlife districts like Shibuya and Roppongi. While this would be nightmarish in many other countries, Japanese manners prevent most from going overboard. This makes the streets fun and safe places to be, no matter what the time. Uber expensive fruit. Causing upwards of 15,000 yen, or approximately 140 US dollars, a pop of Japan's iconic square watermelons are far from an everyday treat. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Some of Japan's most expensive fruits include the jet black densuke watermelon. This is sold for a record price of 650,000 yen, or again, 6,000 US dollars, along with the ping pong ball sized Ruby Roman grapes, which start around at 40,000 yen, or 365 US dollars a bunch. What makes them so costly? I just, who would actually pay that much for fruit? Eh, that's for a different video. Themed trains. When traveling by train in Japan, you don't only travel in style, it's also gotta be themed. 
Japan's themed trains spice up travel with unique decor, fun activities, and exciting tie-ins to beloved franchises. Highlights include the Genbi Shinkansen, which is filled with installations by prominent artists inspired by the surrounding scenery of Niigata, along with the Toriyo Subasa, which offers a footpath and viewing window to take in the gorgeous scenery of Fukushima and Yamagata in peak comfort. And then for the aspiring gentlemen like me, we have the anime and game-inspired trains, such as Pokemon With You and Kensanuma along with others featuring wooded fireplaces, playgrounds, katatsu seating, gourmet meals, sake tasting courses, open roofs, and more. God, Japan does have it all. Made and Butler Cafes Nothing shouts weird Japan better than Made and Butler Cafes. Often found on the streets of Tokyo's otaku hub of Akihabara, patrons can enjoy the surface of impeccably dressed Japanese maids and butlers as they entertain with songs, dances, and performances. The food is also super cute, covered with sauce, illustrations of cats, love hearts, and more, taking kawaii to the next level. Yuru Kiata We're already used to schools, universities, and sports teams having their own mascots, but in Japan, every single town and city has them. Yuru Kiara are Japanese mascots used to remote towns, regions, tourist attractions, products, and more. Ranging from cute and funny to downright bizarre, they can be found across all corners of the country. In fact, two of the most iconic Yurukiaras are NHK's mascot Domo-kun and Akumamon from Kumamoto Prefecture, who are both known worldwide. While often hit or miss, the influence and money behind them is not to be underestimated. Kumamon alone brought in 124.4 billion extra yen for Kumamoto in just two years. Blue Traffic Lights no, you're not going colorblind. What you're seeing is an actual traffic light from Japan, and as you can see, it's green and not blue. So, like, what gives? The Japanese language traditionally made little distinction between the colors green and blue. The word ao, translating as blue in English, was still often as used to describe both blue and green. While modern Japanese also used the word midori to describe green, the Japanese got so used to having no distinction between the colors, most notably in the traffic light system. According to standards set by the International Commission on Illumination, and yeah, that actually does exist, the color of the Japanese traffic light is technically a shade of green that is extremely close to blue. Really more of an indigo shade at this point. Interestingly enough, though, the first traffic lights in Japan officially had Midori lights according to law. However, many publications and people at the time began to refer to them as Ao, leading to the official definition eventually being changed from green to blue to reflect common opinion. Free tissue. Remember the early days of the pandemic and there was a toilet paper and tissue shortage? <sighs> anyway though, in Japan, people practically give them away out on the streets. Wander the streets of Japan's major transit hubs and you'll likely be past a set of free tissues, usually displaying a company's logo and info. This hospitable form of advertising means you'll rarely want for tissues while touring Japan. Although, as if you're gonna need tissues in Japan because Japan's also the birthplace of... Japanese Super Toilets Okay, they can now be found in most modern countries, but Japan is the first country to have used this pinnacle of toilet technology. In fact, they still make and export the best ones. Japanese Super Toilets, known as washlets, come equipped with a smorgasbord of high-tech functions, with various backside sprays, water temperature controls, perfumes, and music to hide the fact that your business is a bit, um, uh, noisy. These toilets of the future put the others to shame. While a bit overwhelming at first, it's pretty easy to get the hang of using it. And coming from a guy who's already used one, trust me, wiping yourself without toilet paper seems like a step back. Now it's time for the day's best pick. Looks like something I'd see in China, honestly. I mean, is this some weird art installation, or do they really process alligator meat in Japan like we do beef? Crocodile meat. Crocodile and alligator meat is pretty much not a Japanese exclusive. Let's get that fact out of the way right now. You can still get some in various parts of the world, and Florida is a good example, as well as the Philippines. But they're still pretty much considered exotic dishes, and you won't be finding them lined up in the supermarket shelves anytime soon. But in Japan, they're really not that exotic. Heck, they even include crocodile dishes in school lunches. In Toyonaka, Japan in particular, served crocodile patties and croquettes were served for lunch at 41 municipal elementary schools in this western Japan city on January 26, 2021 as part of a promotion. The Municipal Education Board was inspired for the idea by the city's mascot character, Mashikane-kun, named after the extinct crocodile. 
This is so that children would take more of an interest in school lunches, and the kids loved it. Yeah, I know, they don't serve croc meat on a daily basis there, but hey, not everybody could say that they've eaten crocodile meat at school, can they? Can you? At school? Prison-style dining Alcatraz Island is an island located just off the coast of Cali that used to be home to a prison where several infamous criminals were locked up. Although it seems strange to name a restaurant after this, Alcatraz ER in Tokyo is definitely a restaurant that has no problem being considered strange. The entire place was themed after a prison hospital, at least what they imagined one to be. Guests would dine in cells and were served with hospital equipment. Despite the fact that Alcatraz ER closed its door for the final time in 2018, it's far from the only strange restaurant in Japan. There's even another prison-themed restaurant that has filled the gap that Alcatraz ER left called The Lockup. And if you like dining while sitting on a toilet, there's also a restaurant that you could go to as well. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Vending Machine Overload Vending machines that sell drinks and snacks are pretty normal, right? They're a dime a dozen, and they actually show up at my day job. There's even some unique vending machines that can sell things like phone chargers, t-shirts, and umbrellas in places like airports. But in Japan, they seem to have an obsession in vending machines. They can be found anywhere and everywhere, and sell all kinds of weird, wonderful, and sometimes ridiculous things. Whether you want a hot and fresh pizza, a bouquet of flowers, a surgical mask, a new pair of underwear, or even a used one, there's likely a vending machine right around the corner with what you're looking for. There's even one for adult videos and reading material. Granted, those machines are inside unmarked sheds, for your privacy, of course. See you guys next time!